I'll be the first to admit and acknowledge that most of modern wrestling just isn't all that appealing to me anymore. There's pockets that I still really like, but even compared to five years ago, let alone 10, 15, 20, it's just not the same for me. And some of that could be representative of life changes and getting older, differing tastes, evolving taste. That's certainly a part of it, but a lot of it, I feel, at least from my perspective, and I can only speak from my perspective alone, is it's the fault of the wrestling business and the talent in the business. Too many damn wrestlers look the same. Too many of them act the same. Too many wrestlers have bland ass, bland ass personalities. The next time they show a personality is the first time they'll show some personality or some charisma. Far more of the business, far more of the wrestlers in the business than not can't talk a damn lick on the mic. It's pathetic. Like eight, ten years ago, you'd have a lot of people come on here on Twitter, on not Twitter, excuse me, on uh, YouTube, and they do videos and they would say, "Oh, I can cut a better promo than a lot of these guys and gals in wrestling." I'd be like, "Yeah, no, you can't." Some could, but a lot of them couldn't. Now the sad reality is they're actually probably right. And I know so often when the th term vanilla midget gets thrown out there, you know, it seems like everybody, especially the hardcore wrestle move nerds, focus on that second word, the midget. And it's all you size steroid muscle freaks care about is the midget part. And personally, I've always been way more concerned about the first word, the vanilla part. Now, does size matter somewhat in wrestling? Absolutely. People don't want to go and see a bunch of people wrestle around and do karate and jujitsu and MMA bullshit when they're the same size as them and they feel like they could take a go. Like people want those larger than life presences. They want those movie stars. They do. But the size factor is not nearly as important as the vanilla factor. You need people that can talk, that can be characters. It doesn't matter whether they're five foot, 10, 200 pounds or six foot four, 300. If you're bland, you're fucking bland. And far, far, far too many wrestlers have gotten into the business over the years that haven't learned the fundamentals of how to get the fuck over the right way to learn how to act like a professional wrestler, to actually work like a professional wrestler, to actually be able to present and project an aura, a presence, a charisma, to learn how to talk on the goddamn microphone, to have some type of unique distinguishing characteristics and character. They don't know how to tell stories. They don't know how to actually work. They think crash test dummying around like a bunch of morons is working because they'll pop Dave Meltzer. What a bunch of losers. So hell no, modern wrestling doesn't appeal to me all that much. Because of the vanilla aspects of it. It is vanilla as hell. And what's really frustrating about it to me is it doesn't feel like wrestling needs to be rocket science. It just doesn't have to be that difficult. Sure, having all types of different characters and personalities is fantastic. It absolutely is. But if you give fans someone to hate, if you can give fans someone to get behind, you put them together, and then you give fans a reason to care about the issue and care about the guy they're behind going over the guy they hate or the girl they hate. Isn't it amazing how well wrestling can still really work? The whole notion of wrestling's dead because kayfabe is dead is fucking stupid. You literally went through a decade of destruction when you talk about the Marvel movies to the point where the fucking Hollywood still can't let that shit go even though it's clearly past its time. The point being is you had clearly defined bad guys, clearly defined good guys, and some guys that kind of went in the middle. But you had characters to hate, you had characters to love and get behind. Did it matter if Chris Hemsworth is fucking Thor and he's not going around acting like Thor every damn way he goes? Hell no! Fuck no it doesn't. Does Chris Evans need to act like goddamn Steve Rogers Captain America all the time? Of course not! 
But when they're in character, they're in character and you buy into those characters and you believe in those characters and then you give them real villains that get real heat that you want to see the good guys beat. It does not have to be difficult. It is not difficult. And the wrestling business over the past decade plus has transitioned to this place where it has incredibly overcomplicated the entire mechanisms of the fucking process. Which is why when I look at a story like what's being portrayed right now between MJF and Wardlow, and I say that, that, that is how wrestling should be. You take a tra more traditional type of heel like an MJF, which is absolutely a rarity in today's business, because too many of these guys and gals in wrestling are too worried about people liking them. I'm too insecure. I can't actually deal with the heat. Bunch of pussies. MJF, meanwhile, is a guy that embraces the hate. He wants to get heat. What a novel fucking concept. He's not trying to be cool or edgy or hip. He's trying to do his goddamn job. He's trying to get over in the way that he needs to get over so that way he can help get his opponent over in the way that they need to be gotten over. It is not a hard concept, but so few in wrestling today can truly actually execute upon it. But MJF knocks it out of the fucking park. And then you take somebody different like Warlow, and it is relatively different compared to when you look at the average like AEW wrestler. Warlow absolutely represents something different. And you give them reasons to care about him. Everyone, for one reason or another, can relate to having an overbearing boss that makes your life difficult in living hell. Everyone can relate to being held back or held down or being restricted from having free movement, having independence, from having the ability to go live your best life. It doesn't matter that Wardlow is bigger and stronger than MJF. You've got reasons to relate to Wardlow. You've got reasons to get behind Wardlow. Everybody can relate to the situation that he's in, in one way or another. And now you take the story and the history between the two of them as on-screen characters. You make the issue personal. It's very easy to relate to. And by God, you've got fucking magic. Because at the end of the day, wrestling is not about the moves and the matches. It's about the men and the moments. And by men, yes, you can also say women. Hashtag he's not sexist. Hashtag yay girlies. It's about the men or women and the moments. Nobody gives a shit about remembering a bunch of chain wrestling and a bunch of spots in a goddamn match six months from now, let alone 10 years from now. But there are certain moments in matches that truly transcend and last the test of time. It's those moments. It's those men. And what matters, those are the things that resonate. Those are the things that stick with you. Those are the things that matter most. And these two guys are going out there and they don't have to do a whole hell of a lot. And they've got the fans fucking eating out of their hands like they're Jameis Winston going after some W's. <laughs> It doesn't have to be that hard. You see how great wrestling can be when you execute on the fundamentals. And the harsh reality is, is some of the dumb shit that the neckbeard fans of wrestling today pop for and geek for is more so a manifestation of them trying to manufacture reasons to give a fuck. And they really truly don't. It's a lot of window and surface dressing. They're not given real tangible reasons to care about these people. Oh, he's a great wrestler. Oh, let me guess. Oh, he's a great wrestler too. Oh my God, let me guess. He can do a lot of moves too. He's awesome too, right? Oh my God, he's awesome too because he does a lot of moves. They're all the fucking same. And even when you rage about him in social media, it's more about your mental instability than it is about your true emotional connection to these talents. And that's what wrestling is about. It's soap opera, it's drama, it's storytelling. It is about the emotional connection. And what we need is more 
of maybe not a carbon copy of the exact story of MJF and Wardlow, granted, but it is a story you've certainly seen play out plenty over the years, where you kind of look at this now and you almost see MJF in the Hunter role. You see Wardlow in the Batista role. The point I'm getting at is, is you've got a heel that you've got reasons to hate him. You've got a sympathetic baby face, even though the, some of the dynamics look like He's not so sympathetic. He absolutely is because of the situation that he's in. But they've also featured him in a way where he does some really cool shit that comes across like a million bucks. And you're like, yeah, man, that dude looks like a fucking star. And he does. And I can't wait to see how Tony Khan and AEW fuck this up. That's right. They're getting the WWE treatment here, bitches. But bottom line, you got the heel that you hate the baby face to care about, a story that matters. When you do that enough in wrestling, that's when it's at its best. The 80s era of Hogan and Crockett. You could say, well, it was just about the characters. No, it wasn't just about the characters. It was about the stories. It was about the way they told those stories. It was the basics, it was the fundamentals. And those companies at those times were great. Even in the Monday Night Wars era, it wasn't just crash TV. It was about characters and putting them in stories that mattered, characters that people could get behind or hate. When you do that, you can make magic happen in wrestling and there's no art form in the world like it. And we need to have more of this. More MJF Wardlow type of stuff and less of the Meltzer match move mark bullshit that doesn't make stars.